Okay, hello, my name is Anel Vasson and I will be presenting Views for Dummies. So this presentation is specifically aimed at people with little to no knowledge about views, but if you've heard of them, stick around, I might be able to teach you something new. So what will we be discussing today is views, obviously, what are they, why are they important, and how do we create them? So let's start with what is a view? This is a view. Now you might be confused. I'm here for a tech talk. Why am I showing you a picture of Table Mountain? So before we can start discussing views, we first need to know in what context we are referring to them. So the views we will be looking at form part of SQL. So what's SQL? The structured query language or SQL or SQL, whatever you want to call it, is a programming language used to turn data in a database into usable information. So what that means is that if we have information like this, that means nothing to anyone, right? We can structure it in a way that actually means something. So now we can see that the data is part of a movie rental database and the data we just saw is just information on someone who rented a movie. So we use SQL to turn data into meaningful information. SQL is also a type of relational database module. Don't worry too much about that. Just know we are talking about databases, right? And also it's a non-procedural language. So instead of saying how things need to happen, like in a procedural language like Java or C-sharp, where we program all the different steps in a non-procedural language like SQL, um, we just say what needs to happen. Like for example, we just say, go delete that table. We don't tell the database how it actually needs to do that. Okay, and then when we tell the database what to do, we do it through queries. So what is a query? You're gonna hear this word a lot today. So when you Google the word query, Google tells you it's a question, right? We all know English. And in, in a SQL sense, it kind of means the same thing. So a query in SQL is a request you make to your database, and it's usually a request for data or to do something with your data or both. Then here at the bottom, I just added a simple select query or statement. Um, you will be seeing this a lot because views are basically just select queries we store in our database. And this is also how you would tell the database to show you your view. So just what this means is it says select everything. So the asterisk means everything from, and then your view name. So that is how you would ask a database to show you your view. So now we can get started with what are views. So views in SQL is like a virtual table that contains data from one or more tables in your database or even one or more tables in different databases. So it is a query that is stored in the database, but it's not an actual table. So I know that sounds confusing, just hang in there. I'm gonna um, explain this a bit better now. So let's say we have a view that is made up of columns from two tables, the movie genre table and the movie table. When we ask the database to show us the view, we see it in the form of this virtual table on the right, right, the orange table. So a view draws its data from one or more tables in your database and displays it in one table. So it's like the, your own personal view of data in the, in, in the database. But what's cool is that this movie genre view table you see here, this isn't actually the thing that's stored in the database. So what gets stored is the view query, or in other words, the thing that says what we want to see when we call our view. So a view is a query stored in our database. And when we call or select that view query, we are presented with a virtual table. Hope that made sense. Okay. So why are views important? There are different reasons why we want to use a view in our database. This is just three of them. Um, there are more. So the first reason you'd want to use view is because it gives you consistency. So it represents the same presentation even when we make changes 
to the tables, etc. So what, just what this means is that for the person viewing the view, it will always look the same. So if we look at the table we just had right in um, the previous example, so to populate our view, we use this um, name column. But let's say the database people decide, you know what, we're going to change the name of this table, we're going to drop the ID column, we're going to add three new columns, we're going to add more information in the table. Um, what does this mean for the view? So it isn't going to change anything in the view. Why? Because the view is the view, right? It isn't concerned with all of that stuff. It isn't going to return an error if we delete a column that it doesn't reference. And if we were to move that name column actually from that table and put it into a different table or even a different database, it doesn't change how the view looks. It just changes where we get our data from. So our view table, the thing we see, will always be consistent no matter what changes you make to your database. Another reason why you'd want to use views is because it gives you simplicity. So it gives the user a personalized view of the database. So let's say we have someone that doesn't know SQL very well, and they need data from like five tables, and the select query for that would use complicated conditions, and order by clauses, and intricate joins they would have a problem, right? Because they don't know what's going on. And to solve this problem, the database people could just write a view that contains all the information they need. And then that person could just use a simple select query to view that information. So instead of worrying about all those joins and everything, the person can just look at that view. And that's much simpler for the person um, that needs to get data from the database, right? And then the last reason you'd want to use a view is because, is because it actually gives you security in a sense. So it keeps users from viewing data that aren't authorized to see. And also in some cases, it actually keeps users from accessing data in um, your database as well. But I'll give an example of that in just a little while. So now the fun stuff, how do we create views? This is a basic view query. Your view query will almost always look like this in a sense. So everything in blue capital letters are special keywords in SQL. So those don't change. Um, so to write your view query, you would start with create view, your view name, and then the as keyword. And that line would always be the same. Please don't call your view view name. That is a terrible name. <laughs> Use something descriptive. But the create view view name as line will always be the same. That is how you create your view. And that line is always followed by your select statement that gets the inf that says what information you want to get from the table. So how a select statement looks is just select and then all the column names of the columns you want to add into your view from and then the tables where those columns are from. And then if you want, you can add a where clause um, with a condition. So an example of a condition would be something like where age is bigger or equal to 60. If you want to show a view that contains all the people that are um, old enough to get a pensioner's lunch at spur. Okay, so that's an example of a condition. And then you always end with your semicolon. Right. So I've just given you a lot of information. So let's use everything we've learned so far and apply it in an example. So this is Tim. Tim is our database guy and he manages the Justice League database. And in this database is a table containing all the information on the members in the league, like the alias, their name, surname, and the cell phone numbers they use to contact each other, etc. So the members of the league are public knowledge, right? We all know Batman's in the Justice League, it's nothing new to us, but none of these members want the public to know their real names or have their contact details because that would be a bit bothersome, right? Breach of security. So remember when I mentioned views add security to your database? So this is actually where it comes into play. So if Tim wants the public to be ignorant of other data saved in the database, 
the view is the way to go because the person working with the view won't know anything about where the information is coming from the database or what other information is actually stored in the database. So Tim can create a view called um, the public member view that will contain the information from the Justice League members, alias, the sector they work in and the superpowers, right? So all the information that is safe for the public to see. And then if the public wants to see the information on the Justice League members, they just consult the view. So now the public people can see the alias, the sector, the superpowers. But what's cool is the me members of the public won't know about the other information like the members or the hero's name, surname, or cell phone number, because they can't see that in the view, right? It's nowhere to be seen. And what's cool is they also can't access that information through the view. So if a member of the public was to ask the database to get the user's name from this view, um, that from, from this table, um, it would just return an error to them because as far as the view is concerned, um, the information doesn't exist, right? Because the view has nothing to do with that column. So that is how you can use views to create or to add security to your database. So let people access information through views instead of directly accessing the tables in your database. And that is the basics on views, guys. So just a bit of additional information. So you can't pass parameters to views. If you are looking to pass parameter, you will need to use a store procedure or use a defined function. Okay? So you can't use views to that. And also you are able to run update, insert, or delete queries on views. I, in some cases, not always, I would not recommend doing that in my personal opinion, but it's just cool to know that in some cases it actually is um, an option to do that. Then we're at the end of the presentation, just to iterate what we just learned, right? A view, when you look at it, it's a table, but the table that you see isn't what's stored in the database. The thing that's stored in the database is actually the view query. And then there are, there are lots of reasons of why we want to use a view in your database, right? Because of consistency, security, simplicity. If you don't know, if you don't have a good reason to use a view, please don't, right? If you don't have a good reason to do something, we don't do it. And then the just the syntax of creating a view again, it's create view, your view name as keyword, and then the select statement that says what you want actually to display in your view when you look at it. And that's the end of my presentation. I hope I was able to teach you guys something. <laughs>